Hi, I'm Clark Chen. I'm a professor at the Graduate School of Education at Rutgers University in the United States. Uh, during the past two years, my research has focused on uh, a number of overlapping areas, including conceptual change, epistemic cognition, argumentation, and learning to engage in scientific practices. And um, at early, I'm going to present on epistemic design, creating learning environments to foster epistemic growth. And, and this presentation is really built on work with, uh, uh, from ongoing collaborations with a number of folks, including Ravi Duncan, Rick Duschel, Ola Samar Bungavan, Ron Reinhardt, Luke Buckland, and Will Pluto. I'm really delighted to have the opportunity to, to discuss epistemic cognition at early in Cyprus this year. I think if we look at uh, recent standards for education, a central goal for many of them has been helping students learn to think well. For example, the 21st century skills movement uh, has this as a goal, and we see the same thing if we look at different countries' standards in areas such as science, math, social studies, and language arts. So I think uh, what's common to all of these is a desire to, to really build epistemic competencies in students. And um, by this, I mean competencies in producing and evaluating all kinds of epistemic products. And epistemic products can include knowledge, but also other, other um, achievements like models, empirical studies, evidence, argumentation, and so on. So I think epistemic competence means ultimately being able to produce these kinds of products in groups and communities because knowledge and all these other epistemic ends are produced socially. And so these are really the goals of epistemic design. Um, what we mean by epistemic design is designing learning environments that help people master all of these uh, epistemic competencies and this means orchestrating lots of different elements in complex learning environments um, including uh, as a, just a few examples effective inquiry tasks scaffolds that can support epistemic growth uh, when students are working with these tasks um, productive assessments that enable teachers and students to monitor growth as we've thought about how to promote uh, these epistemic competencies, it's help been helpful for us to think more specifically about um, uh, what it is that we want to promote growth in. And so the framework I'll be working with and presenting uh, in the presentation is a framework that we call the AIR framework or the AIR model, uh, rather than looking at uh, epistemic growth as a matter of developing certain sets of beliefs about the nature of science or about the nature of knowledge of knowing, we're thinking of epistemic growth as developing competencies in three areas. Uh, aims, uh, ideals, and uh, reliable epistemic processes. So by aims, we mean how can we design learning environments so that students get to the point that they spontaneously on their own uh, will adopt epistemic, role, uh, epistemic goals. Um, how do we, for example, promote the disposition to produce and produce, pursue knowledge even when what they learn um, goes against some of their cherished beliefs? Uh, with ideals, we're referring to um, epistemic standards or epistemic criteria. The, uh, what ideals or standards do we want to encourage students to learn in order to evaluate epistemic products that they create and that others create. And uh, so in our work, we have really seen developing these epistemic standards or these epistemic ideals as really central to our design. And the third um, component of epistemic cognition is uh, the development of reliable epistemic processes. And here we mean all the causal processes that humans use to develop knowledge. And our idea is that there are many, many different causal processes in the world, in the human social world, that people use to create knowledge, models, arguments, and so on. These causal processes are quite specific and, and, and can differ from one domain to the other. So journalists use one set of causal processes for producing knowledge, and eco ecologists use a largely different set of causal processes. And we think that developing epistemic competence means mastering as many of these different processes as possible. So uh, the way we are thinking about this is that just as learning science or learning psychology involves learning lots of causal processes, learning to become an epistemic actor means learning 
wide range of causal processes that can be used in different social situations to produce knowledge, good arguments, good models, and so on. So we think that developing epistemic cognition is largely a matter of developing causal knowledge in the in epistemic domains. In my presentation, I'm going to connect all of this back to epistemic design as I discuss a variety of ways to design learning environments so as to try to achieve these three uh, different kinds of goals. And I'll present a theoretical model of some critical features of learning environments that uh, we think can promote these interrelated goals of, of aims, epistemic ideals, and uh, reliable epistemic processes. And I hope that the presentation will help spur discussions throughout the conference, and I look forward to talking with you there.